Today, I'm gonna spend 100 days, but I can only use water type Pokemon. And in order for me to become the water type champion, I'll have to complete these five goals. First, I'd need to gather a strong team of water type Pokemon and get them all to level 100. Next, I wanna catch a water type legendary and create one water type fusion. Finally, I want to beat the Sired Boss trainer. Can I complete all of these goals in just 100 days? Well, let's find out. I start my adventure by picking Mudkip, of course. To get a head start with my adventure, I explored around spawn, finding these treasure chests, which would give me good items, including these special Pokemon Lucky Blocks. After scouting around spawn for a while, I warped into the special Christmas place where I could find gifts that would give me extra items too. In the end, I had a lot of items and started redeeming all of my prizes, earning me many Pokemon that I just couldn't use. I also opened up my Pokemon Lucky Blocks, and luckily one of them contained a Sfeel, which is a water type, meaning that I can actually use it. Now this uncommon Lucky Block would guarantee a shiny Pokemon, and while I was hoping for a shiny water type, I wasn't too disappointed with a shiny Eevee, as that could evolve into Vaporeon. But before I continue with my adventure, I decided to do something special by naming my Pokemon after my subscribers. So if you ever want a Pokemon named after you, you might want to click that subscribe button. Setting the self promo aside, I took the time to train Mudkip up in the wild until finally Mudkip evolved into Marshtomp. While I was swimming around in the ocean, I noticed a couple of ores underwater that when mined actually dropped water stone shards. I knew that if I collected 9, I could craft myself a water stone. So I basically went diving for an entire day until I resurfaced with just enough shards to allow my shiny Eevee to evolve into a shiny Vaporeon. At the beginning of day 6, I was able to hatch a random egg that I received earlier. Unfortunately though, it was a Swinub. I continued to explore and look around for possible water type Pokemon to add onto my team, and right after I hatched my other egg, I actually came across a Finneon, and yes, I had to get my guidebook out to even remember this Pokemon, so I thought it would be nice to give it some love by adding it onto my team. Now that I had a few Pokemon, I made my way to the first gym leader and realized I was heavily underleveled. So to make up the level gap, I took the time to train up my Pokemon, even trying to take down raids, but since it was a new day, I could claim my daily reward, and luckily enough, it was an incredibly rare item, a rare lucky block. Opening this up will guarantee me a random legendary Pokemon, and all I could hope for was a water type legendary. Luckily my prayers were heard as out came Kyogre, one of if not the best water type legendary Pokemon. This made me extremely happy, and I ran as fast as I could to the first gym leader. I was ready to sweep it with Kyogre. However, it glitched saying I defeated it when I never did. After notifying some admins about the issue, I opened up the GTS in the meantime and was shocked to see 8 fusion shards being sold. This was crazy because all I needed now was a fusion core to make myself a fusion key which is the item you need if you want to fuse two Pokemon together on this server. I mean, just look at all the possible fusions. So I knew I had to grind that money, and the most efficient way was to warp my way into the boss tower and start defeating boss Pokemon, picking up their drops and then selling it to the Pokemart to make more money. Not only was I getting richer, but by defeating boss Pokemon, my own Pokemon started to level up and evolve. This made my team so much stronger and made me much more confident in taking down the first gym leader. Unfortunately, when trying to battle, it gave me a list of banned Pokemon and sadly Kyogre was on the list. With our team down one very awesome Pokemon, we continued with the gym battle and absolutely dominated, earning me the first gym badge, as well as a few items. Feeling confident with my team, I challenged the second gym leader this time. Sure, it was a bit tricky, but in the end, I also got my second gym badge without too much trouble. 
Now that I had two gym badges, I traveled back to the boss tower to grind up even more money, also getting Celio to evolve in the process. Now I finally had eight fusion shards in my inventory, and all I'm missing is one fusion core, but we'll get back to that later. For now, I opened up some vote crates where I got a lot of spare items, and luckily even a master ball. Now my team was missing one member, so I went on a bit of a hunt for a strong water type Pokemon, and huge shoutouts to this kind player for allowing me to tell teleport to them because right now I was in the ultra space dimension. I went looking around for a Pokemon, and what ended up catching my eye was a silly looking Shellos. I then used my EXP candy to evolve the Shellos into a Gastrodon, and after spending my time beating up some raids in the Ultra Space, I came across a wild Dracovish, and remembered that it was strong, and competitively viable, I think? I ended up catching Dracovish anyways, and replaced Luminion with it. Finally, with a team full of strong Pokemon, I decided to take down the third gym leader, but of course there had to be a problem. It seems my Kyogre and Dracovish were banned from participating in gym battles, which just meant that I had to go out in the wild and catch myself a random water type Pokemon, and now it was time to actually fight the third gym leader. Luckily this gym leader only used ground type Pokemon, so it proved to be no sweat at all, as I was able to get my third gym badge very easily. Now I wanted to build myself a base. So I started to gather the materials. However, I don't want to build any normal Minecraft house like I've done so in the past, as I wanted to build one underwater. This wasn't too difficult to do, I mean it's just placing blocks underwater, and then placing a few sponges until I had somewhat of a base. I decided to decorate later and instead focused on the amount of fusion shards I had. Seriously, all I needed was one fusion core and I could start fusing Pokemon. Now one of the ways to get a fusion core is to complete these quest scrolls, we had a lot of tasks to get through, so it was best to do them quickly, and I started off by catching 25 Ice-type Pokemon. This wasn't a very hard task to do, as all I did was throw some Quick Balls on a couple of Ice-type Pokemon, and I was already done with the first task. The next task brought me into the nether, as I could easily find ghost-type Pokemon here and started my kill streak, gathering up 35 dead, dead bodies I guess, cause you know they're ghosts. Anyways, after my poor attempt at comedy, I was another task down and moved on to evolving 8 Pokemon, and finally my last task of leveling up Pokemon. I did this by giving them rare candies, getting Kyogre all the way up to level 100, but at last I had finished all the tasks and was ready to claim my prize, which ended up being a fusion core! Excitedly, I crafted myself a fusion key and headed down to the fusion area where I took a quick look at all the awesome fusion Pokemon I could potentially get. One thing that caught my eye was a Swamper and Kyogre fusion. However, I didn't want to risk my shiny Swamper, I mean this guy was my starter too, so instead I went back to my base and used a specific Pokemon paper to claim this sacrificial Swamper and used it to fuse with Kyogre to create the fusion known as Swampogre which looked incredibly powerful, and was pretty big too. Moving on, I claimed my Battle Pass rewards which gave me a lot of items, including these Pokemon Lucky Blocks. Unfortunately, I got no water types, but I did get a shiny Kakuna. I also had this specific Pokemon paper and thought about what to add, until I used it to add Palafin on my team. With my team being really strong, I thought it would be easy to take down the 4th gym. However, half of my Pokemon were banned, so I had to sit out Swampogre and Dracovish for 2 weak water types, and to my surprise, when I fought the gym leader, Leader, they actually had a water type team just like me. Sadly, I lost and knew I had to improve my team, and I thought the best way to do this is to complete a legendary scroll. I had no idea what the rewards would be, but I was hoping it would be something really good. First thing I had to do was defeat over 300 Pokemon. This was a huge task, taking me hours to complete, but finally, I was one task down. However, I did fill up the Orb of Frozen Souls and used it to summon Articuno. Not like I could use it since it's an Ice type, but it is worth some money when I eventually sell it. I continued my legendary quest, taking down as many ground types as needed, which wasn't so hard as most of them commonly spawned in the desert. Then I moved on to catching ground type Pokemon. Not gonna bore you with the details, but looks like we're done here and only have two quests left. I made my way to the level grinder in order to level up my Pokemon 200 times, but also used this area to evolve random Pokemon for the evolving task, that way I could finish both tasks at once. 
And after a few hours, the legendary scroll was complete. I was very excited to redeem my reward. Unfortunately, my expectations far outweighed what I got, as it was just a few fusion shards and some money. I can't really do anything with this alone, as I still needed a fusion core, but I guess I'll get that later. For now, I claimed some more battle pass rewards. This got me a lot of items. More importantly, this Pokemon egg, as the lucky blocks were a bit disappointing. I went on to hatch this egg at the AFK hatcher, and out came this weird looking Eevee. I decided to use a water stone on it, and now had this Vaporeon which looked kinda cool. Moving on to day 50, I wanted to catch myself more strong water types, and I was looking through the swamp biome hoping to come across a Froakie. However, I was having no luck, so I towered up and created the spawning platform, which improved spawn rates and allowed me to have an easier time hunting for Froakie. Me being an idiot, however, died as you can see from my death map, and I couldn't really follow this map at all, so it seems like I was lost in the wild. I had to do some exploring if I wanted to find my way back into another swamp biome, but my search would come at a stop once I saw this wormhole in the sky. I wasn't too sure what I would do in the ultra space, but I knew I could find some strong water types here. I mean, just look at this Pokemon. It looks like a sushi roll, which is kind of making me hungry right now. I thought my search led me nowhere, but I did end up finding a shiny Choodle, so I guess that's something. I did a Dynamax raid and was surprised to see that my reward was a Park Ball. I didn't know raid rewards could be this good. But as I was going to leave, a Storm Leviathan spawned. This is a custom Paradox Pokemon of Dragon Knight. Luckily, I was able to catch it, and actually add it to my team since it was also a water type. I traveled back to the level grinder in order to train my entire team up, and training I did. After a few days, I had everyone at level 100. Now for the next few days, I wanted to get more use with my team, so I fought against some of the server's NPC trainers around spawn, which proved to be no trouble for me. This gave me the courage to face the fourth gym leader again, but I completely forgot half my team isn't even allowed in this battle, and ended up losing badly as a result. However, I wanted to try and battle the Cyber Boss trainer. Luckily, I could use my fusion Pokemon, but oh my gosh, this trainer has Pokemon at level 140. I was only able to take out Spiritoom until I was destroyed by his Mega Lucario. This disappointed me a lot. I was not strong enough to defeat the boss trainer, but I had an idea once I went back home and saw all of these fusion shards. If I could get a fusion core from this epic quest scroll, then I could make another fusion key. So off I went in search of a bug type Pokemon, but before I could see any bug types, I actually caught a glimpse of some sparkles in the sky and realized that I had just found a wild shiny Skarmory. The chase was on, and I was ready to catch it. After a few failed attempts, I tried to engage it in a Pokemon battle, but for some reason I was still flying away. And after a while, the chunks in the area unrendered, as I was still just flying. Having to forcefully break out of the battle, I flew back only to see that it wasn't here anymore. I put myself back on track to finish this epic quest scroll by defeating and catching bug type Pokemon, again not the hardest thing in the world, and then I had to hatch 6 eggs for my final task. Which I did all at once, but then I realized it only counted one egg at a time. So I had to breed more Pokemon, get more eggs, and hatch them all individually until I finally finished the epic scroll. Thankfully, I got the fusion core and crafted myself another fusion key. I ran back to the fusion room to see what other water type fusions I could make, and that's when Dragon Ninja caught my eye, a fusion between Dragapult and Greninja. So, it was time to head back into the swamp biome where I looked around for a fro key. However, I wasn't so lucky, but had an idea to fish for Greninja instead. This plan worked out in the end, as I was able to fish up a Frogadier. After catching and evolving it into Greninja, I used the last of my Pokemon paper to get myself a Dragapult. And now it was time to fuse both Greninja and Dragapult to get myself Dragon Ninja. Going back to my base, I thought it would be nice to do some remodeling. So I spent the next few days expanding my base, making it much bigger, and even bought these decorative pieces that really made my underwater base look so much better. But now that we're reaching day 82, I warped into the end dimension where I did a lot of raids all by myself. Of course, the moment I returned to the overworld, I also spotted another wormhole. I entered this one in hopes to find another strong Pokemon, and as I was flying through, I found a Paradox Blastoise called Slashing Shell. 
It just looked way too cool not to catch. I also spent some time getting the Paradox Blastoise to level 100, where I learned a special custom move called Grand Cannon. I thought it would be cool to test out these new Pokemon in the Battle Tower, but of course, basically all of these Pokemon were banned. So I pulled up with a ragtag team of water types and got completely washed. Now, I wasn't too sure on what to do in order to get a slightly stronger team, but it did see that I had six fusion shards and a dream. But first, I made a quick stop at the boss tower to beat up a few boss Pokemon, gather some of their loot, and sell it back at the Pokemart to get rich. I did this because there was a Rapid Strike Urshifu on the GTS, which as you know is part water type, so it works for my team. Now I had one more epic scroll left over. First thing to do is defeat 100 Pokemon, a simple and easy quest, only taking me a day to do. Next, I had to beat up 37 electric type Pokemon. Again, not a difficult task as Pokemon such as Mareep or Electrike spawn pretty often. After that, I had to catch around 20 dark type Pokemon. Pokemon. This was kind of hard as dark type Pokemon weren't spawning a lot, but I was able to get it done pretty quickly. And finally, I had to hatch 8 eggs. With the rare scroll done, I was excited to get myself another fusion key, but sadly I only got 2 fusion shards and 1 fake crate key. I had no idea what a fake crate was, but it seemed like I had a 50% chance to get either a shiny or normal Pokemon. Of course, with my luck, I only got a regular Ninkata. I met up with a few of my subscribers, and together we walked around the Ultra Space Dimension and also took down many raids together. Also, shoutouts to Pokey Jake for giving me this very cool Fionn. Now, with only two days left till the final battle, I didn't really know what to do. All I really did was fly around, take down a few more raids, until I looked back at my team as the 100th day finally came around. After traveling back to the boss tower, it was finally time to take down the side boss trainer. I sent out Dragon Ninja to get two Dragon Dances off before trying to fight back only dealing half of Spiritomb's health before fainting. I then sent out Swamp Ogre cause I thought it could tank some hits but oh my goodness it's almost dead. I switched out to Dragonite to clean up Spiritomb but suddenly met my match as the Sired boss trainer decided to end my dreams by sending out Arsernatus. This was one of the strongest fusions ever and rightfully so as all my Pokemon button ended up dying. <laughs> dealing a total of 20% damage on our Cernatus in the end. Well, as anticlimactic as that was, thank you everyone for watching and joining me on this journey. Remember to subscribe for more 100 day videos, and I guess that's it. Bye!